this is a time, this is a good time to plant. Uh, this is a second planting season. We actually have two planting seasons here in, in uh, northern Arizona. Spring is the most popular, May. Frost date, last frost date, about Mother's Day. That's kind of what the, the locals use as the last frost date. It can be the end of April. It can be the middle of May. I've seen it snow on Mother's Day. But as of 100 years of data, the last frost date has been Mother's Day. Now, the thing with 100 years of averages is, is 50 of those years, it was the end of April. The other 50 was the middle of May. So the average is right here. So then we use that as a, as, as a planting date. Also, the gardeners have been pent up way too long, sipping tea and baking cookies inside, and they just want to get outside. So there's this tidal wave of customers coming through as they just want to get out and, and, and add, get their hands dirty. This, right now, when the rains start, usually the rains will start July 4th. Yeah, okay, it's pretty much the first part of July. I think this year it was July 8th is when it started. And it hasn't stopped. I've got over three inches of rain in my backyard. I, I don't know what last night was, but there was pretty good, pretty good downpour yesterday and last night. So I'm sure we're well above. We're, we're doing good. Uh, July 4th usually starts. The benefit of planting now at the start of summer is the ground is warm. That's first and foremost. When you plant in the spring, the ground is bitter cold, sometimes just coming out of the frost. And so you'll find that plants start rooting immediately right now. And it's moist. Whereas in the springs, so there's a dry spell. Usually March is wet, then it dries out, and then you're planting this dry, crusty soil. It's easier to dig now, the ground's moister now. That's another benefit. And then in the spring, we get this prevailing southwest wind. It doesn't stop. I mean, it starts in March and doesn't end until the end of until the monsoon start. Southwest, day and night all the time, unrelenting, all, constantly. And so just this breeze, it always blows. Well, you've got leaves that start coming out new and fresh and crisp in spring. That's not what they want. It's not a, they want to have a break every once in a while, but it's windy. And then secondly, it's, it's bone dry. Humidity is probably, I mean, I'm tracking six, seven, eight percent. I mean, I'm talking like mummies are dried out like, with this kind of dry air and then you're trying to garden in this spring prevailing wind that's dry. Right now we don't have the wind. Not a prevailing wind. Yeah, we'll get this gust that like blows things over, but it's not this unrelenting dry air. It's a crisp, moist, humid. In fact, there's even cloud cover that kind of shades your plants. I find my, my personal gardens, my success has been increased by, by planting in the summer. Also, you get a lot of choices this time of year that you don't see in spring. Uh, you'll, I don't even have crepe myrtles in spring. They're one of the last things to wake up. Uh, they like the summer. Uh, Virginia creeper, uh, the last one to wake up. The trumpet vines, they're in bloom now. You can actually see them. In the spring, they don't wake up until middle of May. They'll finally start to leaf out, much less bloom. They bloom now. And so there's a whole series of plants that you won't even find at the garden center uh, in the spring, you won't find them until summer. And then I think this is the this is the time for June and July, really, is perennial season. This is when you see most of the perennials in bloom. In spring, you see them mainly, they're just green blobs in a bucket. They just barely start to come up. Now, perennials and permanent both start with peas. So that's that you plant them once and you're done. Annuals, they last for one year, they're, they're, they'll die in winter. So that's the difference between annuals and perennials. And perennials, they're coming back from their roots, but they haven't really looked good yet. They're waiting until June, July to start blooming. Now you can walk down and see echinacea. You can see the flower. You can touch and smell it. We try to compensate for that in the spring by putting extra large picture tags on the front of this ugly looking weed in a bucket and thinking, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll be inspired by this plastic tag. But now you just walk through, you can actually touch them and feel it because they're all in bloom. You don't have to read all that fine print going, this will be in June and July, something fragrant and magical. You can just see, oh, this is a new color uh, lavender. Herbs do amazing here. Probably better than anywhere else in the country because it's dry and we can grow all the four season uh, uh, herbs. We don't get the disease a lot of the South and Midwest, Midwest folks get. Sometimes they'll get these black fungal things happen. Uh, because we're drier, 
they tend to have, they hold their oils better. So we grow a lot of herbs that are super easy to grow.